The origin of Thunderbolt II begins with the United States' involvement in the Vietnam War. The F-105 Thunder Chief and the F-4 Phantom were among the most expensive multifunctional planes that the U.S. had. But over the defense forests of that conflict, flashier warplanes ceded much of the close air support missions to easy, propeller-driven planes like the Korean War-era A-1 Sky Raider and Army helicopters. That's where the A-10 comes in. It's been nicknamed one of the most iconic planes in the U.S. Air Force's flying inventory. In today's video, we'll be going over its history, weaponry, and more. Stay tuned. When one considers the long history of the A-10 Warthog, the United States suffers from separation anxiety since Congress refused to let it go. Yet, when it comes to close air support, the A-10 Warthog is a legend that deserves to be remembered. The A-10 was designed to annihilate rows of advancing Soviet tanks during a hypothetical World War III. It has seen action in most of America's post-Cold War conflicts from the Balkans to Afghanistan. The A-10 Warthog is unlike any other fighter before or after, having survivability characteristics designed to keep it flying and get it back to base during an assault mission. The plane had redundant engineering characteristics that allowed it to fly even if portions of it were shot away. We're confident that if you were told decades ago that the Warthog, one of the most advanced fighter planes in the world, would remain on active duty until tomorrow, you'd think you were hearing a huge impossible joke. Instead, it appears that the Cold War's mythical monster has finally had its day in court. The A-10 Thunderbolt II, also known as the Warthog, was the sky terror of the wastelands years ago, with its ferocious appearance and generally painted with fangs on the snout. It is one of the essential low-altitude close air support aircraft in the United States Air Force's arsenal. History the attack experimental program was officially established in 1966 by the United States Air Force to develop a new generation of close air support aircraft and to replace the Douglas A-1 Sky Raider. This was a first for the Air Force, which had Hithro relied on fighters and light bombers such as the P-47 Thunderbolt to provide CAS. The AX traded speed for survivability, mobility at low speeds, and most importantly, lethality. Although the Air Force's existing fighters prioritized speed over everything else, especially the legendary 100 series planes. The Pentagon had learned its lesson by the 1970s. The AX program, which was looking for a new assault plane, wanted something that could handle the task but was also difficult to shoot down and would be able to withstand anti-armor fire. The Northrop YA-9A, which likewise used a twin engine, straight wing arrangement, was pitted against Fairchild's A-10 but the YA-9A's wing group mounted engines and single tail were thought more susceptible. The Air Force chose the Warthog in 1974. The A-10 Thunderbolt, unlike any other fighter before or after, has survivability characteristics aimed at keeping it flying and getting it back to base during an assault mission. It was created to deliver an aerial counterpunch to the number of Soviet tanks stationed along Western Europe's borders, but it was not used in combat until the Gulf War in 1991. The Warthog got its title for destroying 900 Iraqi tanks, 2,000 armored vehicles and trucks, and over 1,200 artillery pieces while returning pilots to base despite significant damage from ground fire. In nearly 8,000 missions, only four A-10s were lost to Iraqi surface-to-air missiles. In 1994, 95, and 1999, the A-10 flew combat and search and rescue flights in the Balkans before being sent to Afghanistan in 2002 and participating in the whole Operation Iraqi Freedom. The A-10 is a single-seat, low-wing, straight-wing plane having two non-afterburning turbofan engines positioned high beneath the wing and in front of a twin vertical stabilizer openage. The plane had redundant engineering characteristics that allowed it to fly even if portions of it were shot away. Around the wing roots, the plane holds 10,000 pounds of internal fuel. The request for proposals called for a low-cost airborne weapons platform capable of lingering above the battlefield and hitting enemy targets with a high-speed rotary cannon at low altitude and speed while providing extraordinary crew and aircraft survival. Later, the specifications would be expanded to provide a max speed of 450 miles per hour and a usual operating speed of 300 miles per hour in a battle to allow for easier engagement of slow moving ground targets. In addition, the new aircraft had to take off in less than 4,000 feet, allowing missions from tiny airfields near the front lines carry an external load of 16,000 pounds and have an operational radius of 285 miles, all for $1.4 million per plane. Northrop and Fairchild Republic were chosen to produce prototypes out of six bids submitted to the Air Force. 
Fairchild Republic's YF-10 beat Northrop's YF-9 in a fly-off in 1973 and fully started production in 1976 with the first A-10 delivered to Air Force Tactical Air Command in March of last year. Weaponry The armament of the A-10 is the strongest feature. 11 auxiliary hardpoints allow the aircraft to carry radar jammers, fuel tanks, bombs, and missiles. The A-10 can carry up to 24 500-pound bombs, 4 2,000-pound bombs, and 6 AGM-65 Maverick air-to-ground missiles. This allows the A-10 to perform a variety of frontline tasks, including close air support and opponent air defense suppression. The nose-mounted GAU-8A gun distinguishes the A-10 from the rest of the aviation world. The Gatling gun's seven barrels can fire armor-piercing rounds at a rate of up to 4,200 rounds per minute, overwhelming a target area with devastating cannon fire. In addition, the GAU-8A is angled two degrees to the left and down to the right, ensuring that the shooting barrel is always aligned with the center line. With specifically designed tank-killing depleted uranium ammo, the GAU-8A was an excellent weapon for strafing Soviet armored forces marching in a single-file line. Even non-depleted uranium armor-piercing ammunition could penetrate the ZSU-23-4 mobile air defense systems, BTR-70 wheeled armored personnel carriers, and BMP-2 ground forces combat vehicles that made up advancing Soviet motor rifle regiments, all of which could be opened like a tomato can by the GAU-8A. The A-10 was designed to fight advancing Soviet tanks with the U.S. Army Apache helicopter gunships in a so-called joint air attack team, AGM-65 Maverick missiles, and the laser-guided electro-optically guided bombs, as well as infrared countermeasure flares, electro-countermeasure shafe, jammer pods, 2.75-inch rockets, illuminating flares, and AIM-9 Sidewinder missiles are also on board. Is the A-10 still a viable option on modern battlefields? The A-10 is still a competent platform against low-tech opponents with inadequate air defense systems such as ISIS or the Taliban. The A-10 cannot defend itself against more advanced attacks such as Russian or Chinese air defenses. Combining the A-10 with air defense suppressing drones might be one answer. A-10s might perform standoff strikes after drones have neutralized the air defense threat, hovering at a comfortable distance while identifying enemy targets and killing them with weapons like upgraded variants of the Maverick missile or the small diameter bomb. The GAU-8A would be used less often for strafing runs, but the cannons would still be used against unprotected mass targets. The A-10 is among the most popular Cold War weapons, with legions of admirers both inside and outside the military. It's tempting to keep the plane flying for as long as necessary. The goal is to keep the plane in service just as long as it is useful on today's battlefield. So long as the A-10 can fight and win for the next generation, that's all that matters. If not, it should be scrapped and replaced with a better aircraft or solution. In the poisonous skies of the battlefield, emotion has no place. So here are some fascinating facts regarding the A-10 fighter jet. The cannon emits so much smoke that it would be able to destroy a jet engine. Because the engines physically stopped down due to a lack of oxygen during testing, a unique combustion chamber was created to keep them going while the guns were shooting. There is an onboard bulletproof bathtub. In a way, yes, the pilot is surrounded by about 1,200 pounds of half-inch to one-and-a-half-inch thick titanium. It's also known as the bathtub because it's the safest place to go when things go wrong and you're being fired. Unfortunately, the Thunderbolt is a difficult jet to take down, even without the bulletproof bathtub up front. It's quite stable and unlike most other modern aircraft, the plane's skin isn't structural, so the majority of the damage is cosmetic. Despite taking a chunk of fire during Desert Storm, this jet made a safe landing at the base, which was roughly an hour away. A three-time Super Bowl winner flew the A-10. Chad Hennings was a key member of the Dallas Cowboys' defensive line throughout the team's Super Bowl victories. What happened before that? He retired with the rank of captain after driving a warthog in the Persian Gulf. If you've made it this far and you want to see more, watch our video on U.S. Army Test's new $150 million drone. So, how do you feel about this wonderful plane? Do you think it's time to retire this plane, or do you believe it has more life left in it? Let us know what you think in the comment section below.